How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. In today's video, I have three topics to cover, starting out with a new Steam Deck beta that adds some cool features. Second on the list, we're gonna talk about how your Steam Deck is finally becoming a PS4 for real. And third, EA is back breaking more games for the Steam Deck. All right, first up, let's talk about this Steam Deck beta. Valve has been on a train lately, just releasing beta updates for the Steam Deck that add great features. The first one we talked about a couple weeks ago was them adding in support for the ROG Ally X, which is pretty cool if you have one of those devices, you know, that you're gonna be able to actually use an operating system that has good battery life and eliminate stuttering on your handheld. I don't really care all that much because I love the Steam Deck OLED, but for the few people out there who have allies, that's pretty cool. But this beta update is all about the Steam Deck Baby, which I love. And the first feature we're gonna get is a sign out option. So currently the way you sign out on the Steam Deck, I don't even know what it is. I'm assuming you would click your little picture at the top right of the screen, and then you'd get a sign out under account details or something like that. This update is making it a whole lot easier because they've added sign out of Steam as an option when you hold the power button and bring up that menu that you traditionally bring up to power it off, restart it, or switch into desktop mode. So that's great. They've added in a lot of fixes for Steam input, which is awesome, uh, especially if you're playing older games on the Steam Deck. One that I had a little bit of controller trouble with recently was Space Marine 1, you know, from like, what was it, like 2011. That game is a crazy experience on the Steam Deck because it's default mode when you boot it up. Uh, it didn't really want to use the controller, which I thought was weird. So I went over into Steam input and I had to find the official layout for that game and then everything worked fine. And then when I got into the game, it launched at like 1p resolution so it was stretched across the screen and it looked super blurry so I had to go into the settings and set it to natively use 1280 by 720 which you know is pretty weird but once I got it all up and running things looked great so hopefully these updates to Steam input fixed that issue with that game and many others. They fixed a lot of things with game recording and I gotta be real I am largely disappointed with game recording. I tried it out with Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit a couple of weeks ago when I talked about that game when it came came out, which I highly recommend that game if you're into survival horror. I was not a Five Nights at Freddy's fan until I saw the movie and I was like, this is awesome. I love my boy, Mike. He is a literally me type character. I love that dude. So I was excited to find that this new Five Nights at Freddy's game is a traditional survival horror game and it has pixel art. Anyway, I had the Steam recording on in the background to just record my entire play session and I found that it did record everything and it played back just fine. But getting files out of the game recording is a nightmare. If you go into the desktop mode, you have to go through like 50 different folders to actually find the footage and it doesn't save in MP4 format. So then I was like, oh, I Googled it and it said that you have to export little clips from the game. So like 15 seconds of B-roll, which is actually useless to me because the whole reason I wanted the recording was to get long form B-roll of my games to use in videos. And even those were really hard to actually get off the Steam Deck. So until they add in a way to just export an MP4 of your actual game, game session recording. It's kind of like a DOA feature for me, but you know, every little feature they add gets us closer to that. So hopefully eventually we can just export an MP4 like you can on the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5 because those game recorders work great on PS Ready and even on this channel. If you see gameplay, that's me actually playing the game, 100% of the time it was just recorded with the share button on my PlayStation 5. So I'd love it if the game recording on Steam got to that point. It is still in beta, so I'm gonna give them a little bit more time to get there before I really start complaining about it. And finally, the biggest and best feature that this beta brings along with it is a global way to change the resolutions games launch in. Now, I never really messed around with this all that much. I should have done it with Space Marine. Now in hindsight that I'm talking about it, I realized that would have been a great way to have it just launch in the right resolution in the first place instead of like the insane resolution it initially launched in. But Death Stranding, Director's Cut. This is a game that since the Steam Deck came out, I have been dying to play on the Steam Deck. And when you boot it up, it runs great. You can get a locked 30 FPS out of it in medium settings. It's constantly listed as one of the best games to play on the Steam Deck, but you immediately realize if you actually play this game that the people recommending it clearly only put like two or three hours into it because once you unlock the ability to build roads and drive, it tanks the hell out of the frame rate. It adds in stuttering. It drops to the high 20s. When you get into any boss battle, it's always at 19 FPS. The game completely breaks down whenever BTs attack you. And 
And to, in my opinion, at least, that is an unplayable experience. But then I found this Reddit thread that said if you increase the resolution of the game past the Steam Deck's window resolution, so past 800p, so you run it at 1080p and then use FSR at like balanced or performance to run it at a lower resolution, that fixes the vast majority of the frame drops in this game. And I gotta be honest, it didn't fix all of them, but it brought it to the point where I'd give this game a fully playable rating on the Steam Deck. So I wouldn't necessarily want to use this feature globally for every game because, you know, I'm just going to run everything I can at 800p anyway. But knowing that they are advancing this feature that a lot of people use on the Steam Deck and a feature that can actually provide a much better experience with a lot of games on the Steam Deck is good. I think this is a great feature that goes totally unreported and honestly underused by most people who have Steam Deck. So if you want to participate in this, just make sure you're in the beta channel. I stayed away from it for a long long time because last summer when I came home I wanted to play Alan Wake. I owned it on Steam and I wanted to play the original version on the Steam Deck. Initially I found that it couldn't run at 60 FPS which was kind of shocking so I dropped it to 40 and I was kind of surprised that I would see stuttering every five seconds like really on the dot you'd see a one frame stutter just go across the frame time graph. They would be like like a, like a cardiograph or something like that. I messed around with it. I looked at Reddit. I looked at YouTube. I saw all this footage of the game running perfectly for all these people playing it. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with my Steam Deck? I realized it was because I was on the beta at the end of my summer trip. And this was actually two years ago, by the way. I said last summer, this was two summers ago. And then I just rolled back to the stable version and everything worked fine. So since then, I haven't really used the beta participation channel on the Steam Deck. But once they introduced game recording, I really wanted to try it out. So I went into the stable beta release and I've had zero problems since then. So so if you want to take advantage of new features as soon as they're available, I would recommend just staying in the stable beta one. Don't go any deeper than that because you're going to have some wonkiness on the Steam Deck that you just probably don't want to deal with at the end of the day. And it could break games that you didn't even know were broken because they haven't been tested because you're on the beta software. So you're not even going to find fixes outside of rolling back to the stable release. And if you have to constantly switch back and forth, that's like 30 minutes of unnecessary time that's going to eat into the time that you actually have to play your Steam deck and if you didn't know they just released a castlevania collection that has dawn of sorrow on it and any game time i get i want to be playing dawn of sorrow so yeah if you're going to stay in the beta channel make sure you're in the stable one that is the point of what i'm saying here anyway that brings us to the second news story which is awesome because i get to reuse an intro title headline thing that i love using on ps ready your steam deck is about to officially become a playstation 4 so i've been covering this playstation 4 emulator over on ps ready for months now it just released into like a a stable version uh, very recently and the main game that everyone is trying to get running on it of course is Bloodborne. This is like one of the best PlayStation exclusives ever. It never came to PC. It never got a PS4 Pro patch. It still runs with really bad frame pacing, resolution drops and everything like that on PS5. So people really wanted to get a PS4 emulator working so they could unlock the frame rate in this game, run it at 60 FPS and really truly enjoy it like you can with Elden Ring and pretty much every other Souls game on the PS5. PS5 or your PC. The emulator is definitely fresh. Like a month ago when I was talking about it, the big advancement they had made was getting into the operating system of the PlayStation 4 and showing the cross media bar. So I was like, man, it's going to be a long time before they actually get Bloodborne up and running. And then three weeks later, they announced that they were able to get into the main menu of Bloodborne. And now you can actually play Bloodborne with this PS4 emulator. And not only can you do that on a gaming PC, but you can also do it on the Steam Deck and it runs pretty well. Now the graphics are nothing great, right? Like they're still artifacting, there's still textures and stuff that doesn't load and it crashes all the time, especially if you play it on the Steam Deck. But when it is working correctly, it runs at a rock solid 30 FPS. And with the pace that this emulator has been being developed, like to be actually usable, I would imagine that we will have a fully playable version of Bloodborne ready to go on the Steam Deck very soon, like probably by the end of the year. Like obviously that's just conjecture conjecture and everything like that. But at the rate they've already been working, if you track the timeline from getting the menu to load for the actual PS5 to getting into the start screen to actually playing the game, that only took like a month. So if they can keep that pace, I don't think it's going to take long at all to actually be able to run Bloodborne on the Steam Deck. And another reason I think it'd be cool to have this PS4 emulator up and running and of course installable through emulator.
Emmy deck on the Steam Deck is there are a lot of PS4 games that look and run phenomenal on the Steam Deck, but if you can run them through an emulator, they might run a little bit better. Stuff like God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us Part Two. There are a ton of games from the PS4 generation that might have pushed the PS4 to its limits, but knowing that the Steam Deck essentially is a shrunken down PS4 in terms of performance, it could be the case that games that are available on Steam from the PS4 generation, especially games that have their director's cuts, so the PS5 port, run better if you just run the original PS4 version of the game on the Steam Deck versus using the Steam version. And that would of course unlock the ability to run games that are available in their PS3 version on the PS3 emulator with the Steam Deck, but could run in their better form on the PS4 emulator like Uncharted the Nathan Drake Collection. Like, can you imagine having all three of the original Uncharted games running on a Steam Deck at a rock solid 30 or 60 FPS? Like that would be absolutely phenomenal, especially considering if you own a PlayStation 5, Sony just leaves PS3 games in the dust. The only way to play PS3 games on a PlayStation 5 is to pay for PS Plus Premium, which is vastly overpriced compared to even PS Plus Extra, and streaming PS3 games over the cloud absolutely sucks. There's blocky artifacting, there's inconsistent frame rate because you're just streaming it from a PS3 running the game. It's not even like being emulated because there's no PS3 emulator on PS4 or PS5, and that's the only way you have to play those games. So if you were able to take the PS PS4 upscaled versions of these games on the go, I think that would be absolutely phenomenal, including stuff like the Shadow of the Colossus remake. Man, that would just be great. So yeah, I don't know the whole process of getting this emulator up and running, and honestly, I'd give them a little bit more time to cook on it before you actually go ahead and install it on your Steam Deck, but hopefully it's not too long of a wait before this thing shows up as one of the featured emulators that you can have installed easily and in seconds for you by Emudeck, because man, Emudeck is awesome. I just saw Alien Romulus. I saw some guy in the comments saying, I saved my money. Don't see Alien Romulus. You're nuts, dude. That movie was the third best Alien movie. And honestly... As sacrilegious as this is to say, I think it might be my second favorite after Aliens. I absolutely love it. Fetty Alvarez is my favorite horror director. So when I got home, I finished up Alien Isolation and I wanted to play one of my favorite games ever. Aliens Infestation, which is a Metroidvania that came out on the original DS. I'm pretty sure after the 3DS came out, so no one played it, but you basically get to play as four space Marines and it's a Metroidvania made by Way Forward. It is phenomenal and getting to play it on the Steam Deck is just great because you have the touchscreen enabled if you use Melon DS and it puts it in a nice little box in the corner of the screen and you just pull the left trigger to flip between which screen is big, whether it's the top screen or the bottom screen and having the touch screen big so you can then touch the different things on it, switch your weapons, switch your character and everything like that. It feels like it was made originally for the Steam Deck and that's awesome. So yeah, having the PS4 emulator ready and good to go with Emu Deck, I feel like we are not far away from that and seeing Bloodborne running on a Steam Deck at 30 FPS, it's awesome. Anyway, that brings us to the third news story here, which is that EA is killing some of the goodwill they built up with the Dragon Age Veilguard announcement that it's not going to use the EA launcher and they are going to break one of the best games on the Steam Deck, which is Battlefield 1. So EA just announced in September, Battlefield 1 is going to get an anti-cheat, anti-tamper upgrade that's going to make it break on the Steam Deck. And that really blows because Battlefield has not really been amazing since Battlefield 1. That game was pretty much the peak for me in terms of Battlefield. Like the era of Battlefield 3, 4, and 1 was the best time to be alive if you were a Battlefield fan, except for maybe Bad Company and Bad Company 2 with the Vietnam expansion, but it really fell off a cliff with Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 2048, and it runs really well on the Steam Deck, and people still play it. It regularly hits like 15,000 to 16,000 different people playing it concurrently on Steam at any given time, and to know that it's going to break on the Steam Deck, having it be one of the only big map-based shooters on the Steam Deck that has working multiplayer and has since the thing came out, that really sucks. I mean, I think EA just needs to sit down and go through all of their games that are available on Steam and just completely remove all of these different launchers and, and just remove all of the launchers, all the easy anti-cheat stuff, and just go with versions that work on the Steam Deck because they're leaving such a huge chunk of money on the table by making it so hard to play their games. It has gotten to the point where if I see an EA game, besides I guess Veilguard, which I was never going to play anyway, I don't even consider buying 
buying it on Steam if I don't already own it because I know at the very least it's going to have to install the Origin Launcher which sucks and even if I do get that installed the time that I want to play these games is when I'm at my parents lake house that doesn't have internet or I'm in the car with my parents and I have time to play games or I'm on a plane going on a trip or something like that and because I'm cheap as fuck I fly Spirit which nine times out of ten doesn't have Wi-Fi so if I get into a game and it doesn't work on the Steam Deck because of the EA launcher it's not worth owning on Steam for me and to see them make good moves like they are with Veilguard and then turn around and break games that are as old as Battlefield 1 it just shows an overall lack of like I don't know what do you call that it shows an overall lack of oversight when it comes to their games so hopefully as I always say these publishers wake up and realize they'll sell many more copies of their games if they just get rid of these stupid launchers and use anti-cheats that actually work on Linux but until then I'm gonna keep complaining about it when they don't anyway guys that's all I've got for you in today's video as always my name is Jimmy Champagne I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching and shape on